Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Trace Measurements with Rodian Schwartz NRP Power Sensors. In this short presentation, we will show you how to make basic power versus time measurements using an NRP series power sensor and the Power Viewer software. This presentation assumes a familiarity with both basic and trace measurements using power sensors. If you're not familiar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentations Understanding Basic Power Sensor Measurements and or Understanding Power Sensor Trace Measurements before beginning this presentation. Basic trace measurements can be made with any diode-based power sensor, but pulse measurements require the use of a so-called wideband power sensor, such as the NRP Z8X series sensors. We'll explain the difference between trace and pulse measurements shortly. In this presentation, we'll be configuring the sensor and generating traces using the Power Viewer software application. If you're unsure about how to install or use Power Viewer, step-by-step -step instructions can be found in the presentation Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NRP Power Sensors. You should already be familiar with the more common continuous average power measurement in Power Viewer. For trace or pulse measurements, we'll need to be in trace mode. The trace measurements can be stopped and started by using the start and stop buttons in the toolbar. Before we can make any trace or pulse measurements, we first have to trigger on the signal. Usually, we want to trigger on the power of the pulse signal, as opposed to an external trigger source, so we'll set the trigger source here to internal. The next important step is defining the trigger level, here minus 20 dBm, which is represented by a blue horizontal line in the trace screen. The trigger level doesn't have to be exact. We can usually change trigger level somewhat and still get acceptable results. In this case, for example, if we change our trigger level from minus 20 dBm to minus 10 dBm, we still get a proper trigger. But setting the trigger either too high or too low can lead to incorrect results. There are a number of other trigger parameters. First, we can specify whether we're triggering on the so-called rising edge or falling edge of the signal, that is, the signal's slope. Parameters such as hysteresis, hold off and drop out, can be used to avoid unintentionally or unexpectedly triggering on brief fluctuations or noise in the signal. Different trigger modes can also be chosen. For example, auto triggers automatically after a period of time, even if no trigger is present, whereas normal only triggers on a trigger event and single executes a trigger one time. In many cases, we may want to change the scale of the vertical or power axis or the horizontal or time axis. We may also want to change the up-down and the left-right position of the displayed trace. These are done in Power Viewer using the vertical and horizontal slash position parameters. For the vertical axis, we define the reference level and the power per division. Our reference level is the upper limit of our display, here plus 20 dBm. And in this example, each division is 10 dB. Changing the reference level to 0 dBm moves the entire trace up, and changing the size of each division either stretches or compresses the trace vertically. We see something similar when we adjust the parameters for horizontal slash position. Since we're now working with the X or time axis, we specify how wide each division is in terms of seconds. By changing the width of each division, we can essentially zoom out or zoom in. Power Viewer also provides additional position and trigger delay parameters for moving the trace horizontally. Next, we want to look at measuring pulse parameters. We could use markers to measure things like pulse width, pulse period, etc., but this is a manual operation and is therefore both time consuming and error prone. The preferred way to calculate pulse parameters is to use Power Viewer's automatic pulse measurement functionality. There are a number of pulse measurement results available in Power Viewer, such as rise time, fall time, peak power, etc., and these can be individually enabled or disabled. Note that although trace measurements can be performed with any diode-based power sensor, these pulse measurements require the use of a wideband power sensor. Additional values, such as algorithm and thresholds, define parameters used by Power Viewer in making these measurements, but in most cases the default values provide good results. After enabling pulse measurements, the numerical results for each measurement are automatically calculated and updated in real time. 
Pulse measurements are more accurate, more efficient, faster, and less error-prone than attempting to measure pulse parameters using markers. Let's end with a brief summary. Simple trace measurements can be made with any diode-based NRP series power sensor, but pulse analysis, or pulse parameter measurements, require the use of a wideband power sensor, such as the NRP Z8X series. To make trace or pulse parameter measurements, Power Viewer must be running in trace mode. Before we can measure pulse signals, we need to set an appropriate trigger type. Usually, this will be a simple internal trigger based on the level of the signal, but external trigger events can also be used. Once we've triggered on the signal, vertical and horizontal parameters can be used to scale the trace and change its position on the screen. Lastly, although we can use markers to measure traces, the automatic pulse parameter measurements are a faster, more accurate, and more convenient way of making these kinds of measurements. This concludes our presentation, Trace Measurements with Rodian Schwartz NRP Power Sensors. If you'd like to learn more about power sensor measurements or Rodian Schwartz NRP series power sensors, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.